Hello and welcome to Traveling with Luigi. In this episode, my wife and I are going to visit the beautiful temple of Horus, located in the city of Edfu, in the south of Egypt. But how did you get to Edfu? Well, you will have to take a flight from the airport departing in Cairo down to the city of Luxor. This is about a one hour flight. Now, Luxor has an international airport, so you could fly directly into it from the main hub, airport hub cities in uh, Europe, for example. Now, once you arrive in Luxor, it's about uh, two and a half hours by car. It's a road trip that you have to take to get to the city of Edfu. Our recommendation is that you hire a local to drive you down there, for they know much better how to navigate the roads and the traffic and all those things. Now, after, as I said, after two and a half hours, you will be arriving in the city of Edfu. People usually do this as part of a longer trip between Luxor and Aswan, for the city of Aswan has some amazing touristic attractions that you don't want to miss, but that's a topic for a different video. The Temple of Horus at Edfu is one of the best preserved Greco-Roman sites in Egypt. The construction of the temple began by Pharaoh Ptolemy III on 237 BC and was fully completed in the reign of Pharaoh Ptolemy XII in 57 BC. A mamisi is an ancient Egyptian small chapel attached to a larger temple. It is usually in front of the pylons and is associated with the nativity of a god. The word mamisi is derived from Coptic, the last phase of the ancient Egyptian language, and it means birthplace. The Mamisi you are looking at honors Harsomtus, the son of Horus and Hathor. The courtyard in front of a smaller structure was the site of an annual festival of singing and dancing. Let us take a look at the layout of the temple. We have the main pylons, the courtyard, the great hypostyle hall, the inner apostyle hall, the hall of offerings, the vestibule, the sanctuary, the chapel of Min, the chamber of linen, the chamber of the throne of the gods, the chamber of Osiris, the chamber of the west, the tomb of Osiris, the tomb of the victor, the chamber of Honsu, the Chamber of Hathor, the Chapel of the Throne of Ra, and the Sun Court. We are looking at the twin pylons in the front of the temple. They measure an impressive 118 feet or 36 meters in height. We can see the King Ptolemy XII smiting his enemies before Horus and his wife Hathor, who is right behind him. Horus is the falcon-headed god of the sky for the Egyptians and the equivalent in Greek mythology will be Apollo. This giant falcon statue depicts Horus, and the small person they are protecting is none other than Caesarion, the son of Cleopatra and Julius Caesar. Beyond the pylon is the courtyard, a large paved terrace surrounded on three sides by 32 columns, where the common people will bring their offerings to the statue of Horus. Adorning the walls are reliefs depicting the feast of the beautiful meeting, the annual reunion between Horus and his wife Hathor. This festival lasted 15 days from the arrival of the sacred cult image of the goddess, which traveled by sacred barge or boat from Dendera to Edfu. The statues of the gods were reunited within the temple sanctuary, where Hathor was symbolically impregnated by Horus and returned to Dendera to bear their son, Harsomtus. Outside the entrance to the outer hypostyle hall, there is a 10-foot tall black granite statue of Horus as a falcon. He is wearing the crown of Upper and Lower Egypt. A stone screen walls, half the height of the front columns, stand to either side and help in obscuring the view of the interior. There are 18 palmiform columns dated to the reign of Ptolemy VIII, who was given the not-so-nice nickname Fiscon, or Fati, by his contemporaries. There are 12 papyrus columns, which symbolize the concept of Amduat, 
the nightly journey of the sun god Ra through the 12 regions of the netherworld, corresponding to each of the 12 hours of the night. In this inner hypostyle hall, the ceiling and the columns at the top look black. This is from a smoke of people that lived here. They probably cooked or they probably lit fires to warm up during the night in the winter. The walls are very richly decorated with different scenes of Pharaoh and the god Horus. But not only the walls, also the columns, as you can see. Now, there are a few rooms that you can access from this hypostyle hall, but let's take a look at this one and let's hear what our guide has to say about this place. This is the recipe for the producing recipe. perfume in ancient times, and they used them for purification inside the temples, for the garments, and for, you know, for purifying the statue of the god inside the temple. This is and this is and all this natural is, from flowers? Yes, flowers, yes, all the time. All, 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 all the full flowers. And this is also another recipe. rest of the recipe of the perfume. So the recipe is for perfume. Amazing, isn't it? Well, after this visit, uh, we were taken by our guide to a place where we could actually purchase the perfumes that are described in the recipe. Let's talk about the stairwell. The stairwell design mimics the spiral circular path of a falcon's ascent. Another stairwell on the other side of the temple is used to descend from the roof and is straight to evoke a falcon's downward plunge. During the opening of the year festival, the equivalent of our New Year's Day, the cold statue of Horus was carried up the ascending staircase to the temple rooftop to bask in the first sunrise of the new year. The ritual is depicted in raised relief with figures of priests and bearers. Unfortunately, I cannot show you that because roof access is closed to visitors. The narrow room beyond the inner hypostyle hall is the hall of offerings. This is where food and drink were consecrated daily for the eternal sustenance of the deity. The sanctuary contains a granite shrine. This is the oldest and most sacred part of the temple and once held a golden cult statue of Horus. Nowadays, a reproduction of the god's processional solar bark or boat rests on top of a pedestal. The original is now in the Louvre Museum in Paris. This is the Chapel of Min. It's just one of the multiple chapels, storerooms, and other chambers dedicated to various deities, including Sekhmet, Osiris, Honsu, Hathor, and Ra, and they are arranged around the central sanctuary. Now we will enter the room for the tomb of Osiris and the chamber of the West that was also used as a library. Let's hear what our guide has to say about that. Book room or the library, this is like a shelf for keeping books mm. and very important documents. And this is one of the crypts. Like this is a, the crypt that goes and down and you walk underneath the temple. My wife and I really had a great time visiting this temple. Now, we left some details about it on purpose, so you can actually be so pleasantly surprised when you visit it in person. So, uh, as I usually say, thank you so much for watching us. Until the next time, and happy travels.